Hello everyone, it's Laffy Traffy. I'm here with my first chapter review! Chapter 1001, Battle of Monsters on Onigashima. And let me just say, they are monsters. All of them. I'm so glad that this chapter is everything I wanted it to be, and so excited that the chapter picked up right where it left off on the last one. Perhaps the next chapter we'll have to cut away to see what everyone else is up to, but I just want to sit here and watch this fight. Read this fight? Yeah. So, as Kaido is having an existential crisis on getting smacked into the ground by Luffy, the other supernova are fairly surprised to see this new hockey. This pretty much confirms that Luffy is the only one who knows it then, which kind of makes me worried about Kid and Killer, but we'll go into that more in a minute. Even Zoro is surprised, which again makes me believe that Zoro can't use Ryo. Enma, with whatever power it holds, will be enough to cut Kaido and do major damage to him though. So there are so many beautiful panels in this chapter. As Kaido is thinking about Luffy, you see Rox, Roger, Whitebeard, Odin, and Shanks behind him in a poster level amazing shot. Then again when the three captains go in for attacks, and then again at the end when you see the duck dragon fish Kaido flying around with Big Mom on Zeus hovering over the supernova. These are great. So, as Kaido acknowledges Luffy's strength, possibly, I mean, I, he's not comparing him to those great powers behind him, but I think it's really cool nonetheless. So Kaido goes for another THUNDER BUBBLE And it was unclear in the unofficial, but in the official it clearly says that Luffy managed to dodge a good portion of the blow as to not be as devastating as last time. We all remember how that went. RIP. He was calm and was able to use Future Sight, but even then he got hit? His speed is immense, which leads me to diss on the anime some more because Kaido's inhuman speed that was shown in the manga when he first one-shot Luffy was not portrayed at all in the anime. But I'll move on from that rant. As Kaido sees Luffy not be immediately knocked out by the same attacks, I can't get out of my head how much Kaido just looks like a proud dad. Are you winning, son? Oh god! I mean, Kaido is so obsessed with strong opponents. His entire MO is to try and find someone to go down in a blaze of glory with. Someone like what Odin could have been if it were not for the old woman meddling in the fight. And that's why he tells Big Mom to stand back as he judges their power and lets them land all their attacks. I think it's just wishful thinking on his end. Big Mom seemed pretty miffed at this too, so we'll see how long she actually stays out of the fight. So then Luffy's caught off guard, and there's a cool scene when Prometheus goes to attack Luffy and Oh god, Zoro can do Foxfire! Zoro can do Foxfire! When did he learn this? This this has been foreshadowed since Punk Hazard! Zoro can do Foxfire! Can he- he can get the Boro breath! Oh my god, I hope we see that! Ah! Moving on, Law saves Luffy from what we can only assume would be massive damage. And we see that Law has been very hung up on him seemingly obeying Luffy's orders. I mean, I thought it was nice that Law, just without hesitation, just simped for Luffy since he's kind of leading the game here and they fought together before. But it was also nice to see that he tried to regain his dignity by clarifying he wasn't listening to Luffy at all and just did what he wanted to do anyway. So there. I often think of him like a Grand Fleet member, but you have to remember, Law is determined to be his own captain and not be associated to be under Luffy or following him in any way. He's only doing this alliance as an equal pirate captain. Law often goes out of his way to reaffirm this, but who knows? Maybe he's just overcompensating and doesn't want to accept that he's part of Luffy's gang. I think he's just making a big show of it because Kid is there, honestly. I mean, I think his best bet to reveal the will of D for Corazon and everything that he's been striving for is to honestly stay with Luffy and therefore Robin. But I've already went on enough of a Law tangent, let's get back to the chapter. Oh jeez. <laughs> Man, when they start a pissing competition, they did law dirty. I can take Luffy and Kid having meme faces, but not law. He looks so bad. <laughs> I mean, it's so on par with the three of them. <laughs> I just lost it when they're all just waiting until the last possible second not to dodge it to see if anyone else is flinching. Of course, their prides are on the line, so no one flinches, and they just get hit in the face by flame ball. Sorry, heavenly bonbons. <laughs> Talk about hit to your pride. I think though that this playful and carefree nature of them not really taking this too seriously, on the outside at least, 
will be used to show the dramatic shift of the mood of the fight when, not if, when things start to go south. It definitely won't stay like this. Big Mom and Kaido are just playing with him. It's outright Sid, so we'll see how long this lasts. I really look forward to when this fight turns from a dick measuring contest though, to a moment where they have to set aside their competitive natures and all come together to defeat the Yonko. It will be a nice character development moment for the three captains. And even Zoro and Killer are competing with each other, so we can see them work together too. The Zoro vs Killer argument though continues with Killer telling Zoro that if he had his Punisher, I barely know her, then he would have won. Zoro just claps back with a, it would have ended the same. You see Zoro and Killer both go for the killing blow at Kaido's neck, but then you see a panel later that it's just a surface level scrape on his neck after both of their attacks, and Kaido is not surprised. This is when Zoro comments on having to unleash more of Enma's power. Oh man, I just really hope there's a moment soon, surely there'll be a moment, where Kaido recognizes that Zoro is wielding Odin's blade Enma. This will be cool, either before or after Zoro finally manages to cut him. And as for Enma, I don't know if it's confirmed one way or another, but I see Enma as using and enhancing Zoro's existing hockey. So it's not as if Zoro is using some outside force to be artificially stronger. Zoro mentioned having to balance the output of Enma too, so I'm looking forward to Zoro being able to master Enma in this battle. Who knows, maybe Zoro could unlock Ryu in the intense battle while watching Luffy? Maybe? Maybe. Now we go to the big attacks from our resident captains. First of all, holy crap, Kid has a mech suit. I saw a lot of people saying that he was going to get one, so I'm glad Kid has a mech suit. You can see it better in a later panel, but it's actually hovering like some badass spacecraft. Even the arms are detached and just hovering there. This is an awesome design to keep it original from, you know, the rest of the mech suit battle shonen things that happen. <laughs> but. It really also shows what kind of mastery Kid has over his own devil fruit. It looks so cool! We get another awesomely named attack called Punk Vice from Kid. Also, Killer's Decapitation Claw! Uh, I mean, Beheading Claws. That's not as profound as Decapitation Claw, but it was pretty badass too, I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, so Kid's biggest idea is to crush Kaido because he knows how hard Kaido's skin is. At first, when he responded to Luffy's attack with, Oh my god, I can't believe a punch actually damaged Kaido. I was sitting here like, then what are you doing here? <laughs> if you know that punches can't hurt him, what's your plan? But then we see his plan. To crush him. To compact him. I, I mean, I guess it's a plan. I, theoretically, that should work. I don't know. I hope Kid comes up with something, because right now, as I kind of mentioned before, Kid and Killer are really lacking in this battle. Luffy has advanced hockey, Zora has Enma, and Law can use internal attacks, but these two don't have much in their arsenal as the way to damage Big Mom and Kaido. Maybe they'll be more tanky or be a distraction, and that will work in the favor of the group, but I feel like Kid is really flashy and he has to show everyone else up, so I wonder where he'll go from here. Anyway, Luffy uses the classic Gear 4 Calm Gun, which I'm going to assume all of his attacks just have Ryu innately in them. I haven't seen a distinguishing feature visually to depict Ryu, Ryo, Ryu in the manga, so until it's outright mentioned, I'm just going to say that all of his attacks are utilizing the advanced hockey. So now on to Law. There's a few things to touch on here. When I first read it, Law's opening statement I will go straight inside the body to deliver a surgical death. Pretty intimidating. And that, to me, indicated that he was going to use something like Gamma Knife. However, he just uses tact to throw some rocks at Kaido. And it's not totally clear, but it kind of looks like those tips are coated in hockey. Maybe it's just me. I don't think so. I, I think it's just a shadow on the rocks, but it definitely looks like they're coated in hockey. I mean, that'd be awesome, and a useful power-up type thing that Law could have gotten, but still, I think it's just weird shading. Maybe we'll find out. Realistically, even if Law could coat the rocks in hockey, it's still just normal hockey that wouldn't affect Kaido anyway. So I was kind of confused as to what Law was doing. But the more I thought about it, tactically, the more it kind of makes sense. Law in this battle will be the most useful to stay far away from Big Mom and Kaido. He can manipulate the battlefield, as shown when he shambles Luffy out of the way of Kaido's attack. I mean, he saved Luffy from massive damage, like I said. That's a lot of damage. 
With that and any possible healing at their advantage, Law needs to stay away. So much though so that to Big Mom and Kaido, he might be the first target. Just unfortunately, he doesn't really have any super powerful long range attacks. And when I say powerful, I'm talking Kaido level powerful. Sure, he can cut an entire mountain in half, but I think it's just a testament of hockey. And Kaido can't be cut. I don't think he can be cut that way. Sorry, Virgo. His best bets are his up close and personal attacks of Gamma Knife and Counter Shock, which both affect the target's insides. It was just weird for him to talk about his internal surgery, but then just throw some rocks. But we gotta remember, Law is like a high level spellcaster. He's got one or two ninth level spells, and they're gonna do some damage, but they're limited. Plus, when it's time to use them, Kaido and or Big Mom need to be more damaged and open to the attack. The others need to make openings so that he can use those high caliber attacks because it's a big risk, even with his teleportation, to get right into Kaido's face. <sighs> and here I thought I was done with the law tangents. Can't be helped, really. Now, finally, we're at the end of the chapter where Kaido turns into a dragonfish and flies up to do some more dramatic posing with Big Mom as they stare down the supernova below. Looking at this panel, I really like the dichotomy between the captains. It's a small thing, but it's cool that Kid and Luffy have these giant enhanced forms looking all crazy, and Law's just standing there on a rock chilling. He's just vibing. The Yonko declare they will take everything they have, poneglyphs, treasure, their crew, and friends. The stakes are high, as the one who are the victors take the huge step to becoming the Pirate King. And there's a break next week. So I really hope this just continues with the fight next chapter, because fighting dragon form Kaido will be amazing. Unfortunately, in return for amazing fight sequences, it seems like the chapters are shorter, but that's okay. There was more than enough to discuss here with this chapter, so I'm okay with it. This will be some stampede level awesome. We'll probably get a look into some other fights, maybe we can get to see what Sanji's up to? Poor Sanji. What I'm hoping is that Robin, if she isn't looking for Poneglyphs, shows up to save Sanji from Black Maria and we can get a long-awaited epic Robin fight. And then Sanji can go help Marco defeat King and Queen, and then they can go join the battle up top. Man, I just want Marco to join the battle. Who knows? Anyway guys, that wraps up my first chapter review for chapter 1001. That's still crazy to say. This is a great time to be reading One Piece Weekly, and I look forward to continuing with my reviews. Hope you enjoyed, and let me know what was your favorite panel. My personal favorite was Luffy standing in front of the legends of the world. Minus Marines. Oh, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> but there's also the panel with Dragon Kaido and Flying Big Mom. The supernova attacks. Or maybe you liked our beloved three captains haw face? <laughs> Let me know! As always, subscribe if you liked my reviews and want to see more. And check out my other series I started where I'm comparing how well the manga was adapted into the anime by going episode by episode. So have a great day, follow your dreams, and check me next time. Bye!